is a piece of music called Clapping Music. It's written by minimalist composer Steve Reich. It's also a piece of music called Bang Bang, written by producer Max Martin, but let's talk about Clapping Music. <laughs> Minimalism was a movement, and still is a movement, in contemporary classical music that's a reaction against what's seen as the overbearing complexity of 12-tone serialism. Minimalist composers like Terry Riley, Philip Glass, and Steve Reich sought a return to more simple diatonic harmony and created a new style of music based upon slowly evolving textures. Minimalism might not be the best term for this kind of music since sometimes the rhythmic textures are quite dense, and also the pieces can be punishingly difficult from a performance psychology standpoint, but the name minimalism has stuck, so that's what we're going to go with. Steve Reich wrote clapping music in 1972. At the time, he was on tour in Europe with his ensemble, and the logistics of shipping sophisticated audio equipment everywhere gave him the desire to write a piece of music that could be performed with just the human body and no instruments or equipment required. He got his inspiration for this music while he was in Spain. He saw a performance of flamenco dancers, and then he immediately got the desire to write music for clapping hands. For all intents and purposes, clapping music is just a single bar of music performed on a loop by two musicians. The piece uses one of Steve Reich's signature techniques, which is known as phasing, where one of two or more musicians playing the same pattern will shift the pattern over by an eighth note. The displacement of an eighth note now means that there's a more complicated composite rhythm. The process continues until the second voice resolves back around and the two musicians are playing the same thing again. For me, it makes the most sense to learn all 12 permutations as their own unique rhythms with their own unique feel. Steve Reich apparently felt the same way, and so on the original sheet music for clapping music, you can actually see all all of the different rhythms written out. It's a 12-beat pattern, but notice that Steve Reich didn't write a time signature. This was on purpose. He intended for the musicians to be able to feel the pulse in different multiples, in groups of two-eighth notes, three-eighth notes, four-eighth notes, or six-eighth notes. Now, my initial tendency is to want to feel it in groups of four-eighth notes. But it's a really fun exercise to try and feel it in groups of three-eighth notes. It's kind of like a musical Necker cube. You can hear it in different ways, just the same way that you can see the cube in different ways. The underlying pulses are what are called the hidden beats in traditional West African music. The actual rhythm that Reich used is very similar to the ads Atsieg, Atsieg Bekor bell pattern from traditional Ghanaian music. Russell Hartenberger, a longtime member of Steve Reich's performing ensemble, has this to say about performing clapping music. Clapping music, like all of Steve Reich's music, demands a different kind of virtuosity from its performers. It showcases their concentration, endurance, rhythmic precision, consistency, phrasing within repetition, and comfort with metrical and perceptual ambiguity. So the music is difficult. Might not be difficult in the same way that it is to perform a Paganini caprice, but the stakes are very high for any screw-up, since any deviation from the pattern can cause the entire performance to train wreck. Fortunately, we live in Steve Jobs' brave new world, so there's an app for that. You can practice clapping music with the Clapping Music app for iOS, and it's actually pretty useful once you get the hang of it. I've had some mixed feelings about the gamification of music, but I found that this app in particular is really, really well done. Now, even though it's written for two people clapping, clapping music can still be performed on other instruments if you want to get the hang of phasing. When you're trying clapping music out on bass, make sure to make every single note very, very short. The tail of each note on bass guitar can be a little bit too long, so when you have two people who are trying to interlock rhythms, it's important to keep everything very staccato. Left hand muting works wonders. I combined clapping music with a vocoder version of Bang Bang by Max Martin. Why did I do that? Well, why the hell not? Enjoy! <laughs> Anybody could be bad to you
Thanks for listening. This has been Adam Neely's Bass Lessons. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this particular lesson. I have a new lesson coming out every single Monday from now until eternity, or when I get bored of it. Until next time, bass. Oh, by the way, if you enjoyed that vocoder thing, I have a lesson coming out on how to use a vocoder with your bass guitar coming out in, I think, about two weeks now. So definitely stay tuned for that.